Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back. We're back in sunny old Redford, and it has been sunny the past couple of days. It's fantastic. All the more reason for me to crack on and complete our awning project. I have now ordered the required pulley system, or at least the pulleys, to be able to uh, retract and uh, extend the canopy uh, from one position only, controlling all three canopies. It's a very complex um, array of pulleys, and bloody hell, the pulleys that I've had to buy, they're like 25, 30 quid each. So I've spent 130 quid on pulleys, which I'm not happy about, but at least I've got the right style there, like marine, what you'd have on a boat kind of block pulleys I think they call them. So this is going to be the uh, the layout of the pulley system. I know the photo is not the best in the world, it's a little bit small, but you should kind of get an idea of exactly what we're aiming for there. So uh, there's one guide wire that comes down, I'm going to have it run down the side of the door and you just pull it one way and everything goes that way. Pull it the other and everything comes back. But we can't do that until the pulleys arrive, of course. But what I can do is finish off the, the metal poles, these. Finish cutting these down to size, inserting them, drilling them, and putting on the little cleats, and then the snap hooks. So yeah, we're back with a fizzle and a pop, maybe not a bang, because we're picking up a project from last week, but uh, well, that's the way she goes, big nose, I'm afraid uh, we have to knock these off the list, and then once that's done, hopefully later on this week, we'll also see the arrival of the steel, so we can finish off that brick wall and uh, railing section. That's going to take quite a bit of welding, I think, to get it looking uh, spot on, and then it's going to want painting, of course, so I will probably... Uh, paint it, oh, do I paint it in here or paint it in situ? I might paint it in situ. Well if I paint it in here and then take it out I suppose it gets the biggest wow factor. So we could take it out, try it for size, make sure that the fixings all go in the right place, drill the holes in the brickwork, get it ready for installation, then bring it in here, paint it up and then slam it out there when it's completed. And everyone will go, whoo! Maybe we could time it with putting the canopy up and uh, the beer garden will be all complete then, just about. And then one of the other projects that we're going to have later on, maybe next year, but in the beer garden at some point, is the erection of some type of bandstand, pergola styly thing, semi-sheltered. Uh, but I'm only at the planning stage for that at the moment. Um, we do have lots more uh, talking of planning. We do have lots more paperwork to do with the accounts and everything. Our fantastic new accountant uh, is helping us put together everything that we should have had previously, but didn't, so we're getting together an asset register so we can get a proper valuation of the business as it stands uh, at any moment in time, and uh, all these other things that uh, are, as she described to me, a bit of a headache and a bit of homework right now, but without a doubt worth it in the long run, and I must say I completely agree. Uh, another disappointing thing as well, we've got to pay a VAT bill this month, uh, so that basically sets us back to zero in the bank account. You do all the hard work and the VAT man takes it away from you. It's not fair really, but c'est la vie, this is life. Looks like the price of beer is going to have to go up, doesn't it? <laughs>
to do on the actual canopy itself so that is now ready to go up onto the wall and we go next door with the drill and put some holes in place exactly where all of the uh, all of the cleats need to go for the blocks that we're going to put in the winding blocks that we're going to put in for the actual uh, gear mechanism to bring the whole thing backwards and forwards I was hoping uh, that they'd be here today, tomorrow, or the steel would arrive for the gates, but it doesn't appear that it's going to be today. We're now well past one o'clock. So, I've been upstairs for an hour, and I've put together um, a pump clip and a name for the, bro for the beer that we brewed. So I've put together a pump clip and a name for the beer that we brewed last week. You know, the Neck Oil Clone, the badass, heavily hopped, double IPA if you like, session IPA, double dry up IPA, I should have really put that on here. Oh never mind. Uh, it doesn't say double dry up, even though it is. But this is what we've come up with. So I'm really pleased actually. Uh, I've taken inspiration for the name from Ave. I watch a lot of his channel and he's always talking about proof of concept and if you've been with me through the brewery build then you'll remember that uh, every time we've taken on a project we've done exactly that we've tried to prove the concept so we'd model it first on uh, paper then like with the tanks for instance we made some paper models out of the tanks and then from there we set about building them but yeah I think that looks pretty darn cool I'm just trying to get obviously a shot here for a thumbnail which I think that'll do so all I have to do now is cut around these four pump clips and stick them onto these foam backboards that we've got I had loads of these cut at IVB and I've got tons of them left over so uh, I'm going to use them up until they're all gone and then when they're all gone we'll probably redesign what we're going to do we might even be selling a bit more beer to other people by then so I might get some proper pump clips made but uh, up to now, we're going to stick with these. So this gives me an opportunity to use my new cutting mats, which I picked up the other day from a company uh, called Boys. You may have heard it before. No, it's not what Tom loves. Boys, boys, boys. But it is, uh, it's like a, a store that sells pretty much everything. They don't exactly know what they are, I don't think. So let's get the camera focused down onto the cutting mat. There we go, it's looking more like Ace Channel every day, isn't it? Oh, big Clive Styley. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to take my ruler and line up where I think is a good position. And I'm just going to take a slice with the knife, just like that. So that's one side. Then we're going to go down the middle. There we go. And then finally, this one, which is about the. And you might think that that's all there is to it, but unfortunately, a lot of these foam backing boards 
are actually the wrong size. So what I've done is I've made sure that the uh, actual print is a little too big in the first instance so we get all of the pump clip on the actual board without seeing too much of the white edge and unfortunately most of the time you do see quite a bit of the white edge so I'm just going to line this up where I think it's going to look good and then I'm going to change the blade in here because this is dull So in order to get obviously a good slice around the foam without tearing or dragging at the actual image, which I don't know if you can see on there, but that's what's happened. Can you see the, like, the corrugations down the side there? That's because the blade isn't sharp enough. When the blade's not sharp enough, it tends to pull on the work meaning it's not going to cut as effectively as we'd like it to so because we're going to use the board the foam board as our ruler if you like I have to make sure that it's sharp enough to handle it right here we go in fact I've got another idea which is better than that deliveries bud This is a more sensible way of doing it, I think. Now we've got the sharp blade in. So I'll pop that down onto there like that. Push it up onto all the edges. And then what we can do is we can use the blade and the foam board as an edge. There we go, I've worked a treat. Oh, look at that. And it's just gonna run all the way along. Beautiful. There we have it, proof of concept. Pump clip one, ready to go, on the bar, in the brew shed. The only place you're gonna get this beer. Friggin' right, boys and girls. Let's, uh, let's chuck this upstairs. It's going to be a couple of days before this beer is actually on the bar. But once it's on the bar, I'm definitely going to be freaking trying it. So we finally got the last piece of rigging up. And that includes this piece of timber that we've popped up here. So that timber is actually going to double up as uh, anchorage for like a little cover to prevent anything out of those windows falling into the channels of the canopy or indeed uh, rain gathering in the in the cleats so I just got another parcel to pick up so we'll take that next door and go and have a look what it is probably nothing important Stuart's uh, little pergola blew over on the weekend so he's got to take that down and uh, probably dispose of it the hops are getting some length on them if you look at that it's actually starting to crawl up the wire a little bit now look and there's Sambo right on cue Hello. there he is look How do you do? all right you're taking out them dead uh, customers that we disposed of the other day <laughs> so I'd better get myself tidied up then I think now get all this rubbish put in the bin just like that and uh, well it is four o'clock I could bugger off home because I don't have the pulleys that I need to set up the uh, canopy I don't have the steel that I need to build or finish off the railings for the wall um, so I'm in like a bit of a quandary as to what to do for the day I don't really want to go home because I know I'll just crack open a vacant gesture and that would be me sat down for the evening so I really think that I'm gonna actually pull the 
uh, tanks that we've got out there onto uh, onto the trolley jack. Uh, bring one on here in here, laid on its back, and uh, start to weld up the ports on the cone, so we can at least try to get some of the uh, the tanks on a CIP over the over the week while we're waiting for other things to happen. So uh, yeah. I shouldn't really be dropping them tanks on my own because they do weigh quite a bit, but I can manage it. Anyway, we'll see. I'll clear this up and hopefully Stuart will be back to give me a hand by then. Hey, we'll see, we'll see. Let's put these tools away. Well, would you believe it, right on cue still arrived, so we've got this bad boy on its back and you can see the hole that we are going to be making the incision well actually the incision's been made I need to now balance the fitting on there while we're hooked up and we've got the welder all uh, rigged up tack it on the outside and then go on the inside and do a lovely little flow weld all the way around it Oh, it's going to be quite tricky. Maybe I should make a little back purge box for this. That will probably be the smartest way of doing it. So the plan is, I'm going to dive inside the tank. I'm going to tape this to the walls of the tank behind there. And then on this side, when we put the fit in, we'll put the hose for the purge pipe on the outside and we'll flood the whole area with argon. We'll weld the outside first. And then we'll take this off and then we'll go on the inside and we'll reflow the inside meaning that the inside gets the last treatment and will be the most sanitary and if there's any coking on the outside we don't really mind too much about that I don't think. So this is the setup we have as you can see we've got the fitting tacked onto the vessel this pipe pointing up at, out the way if you like where we've got the argon purge going into the top of it and then underneath we've got the tray just sellotaped basically to the bottom uh, so once this fills up with argon there's a little hole in the top here for it to push out then I can start to gradually, slowly, precariously go around the outside of this fitting like that and uh, fill that little joint in and then I have to go on the inside and do the same again. It's very tricky. These are the most delicate bits when you're welding anything onto a tank. The ports are one of the most difficult parts, if you like. Now I can't say that was easy I and mean, it has made me go a little bit blind because I was right up against it, but there we go, that is the weld. And if I just shine a bit of light on, it's got a good colour to it, which is kind of giving me an indication that on the inside we've not suffered any uh, any coking. So let's go in, remove that cover and have a look. Well, it's been a while since we've done this on the channel, but we're going in. Oh, it reminds me of the old days when we started building this brewery. Little more than a year ago, would you believe it, folks? Little more than a year ago. So this is what you can see here is the uh, baking tray, basically. Presentation tray, flan, flan tray, whatever you want to call it. Who cares what you call it? All I know is it worked a treat. And it did hold the argon because I can taste it coming out from behind there. And there's the port, so let's pop some light on and have a look. So, a little bit of coking at the top, I'm not sure if you'll be able to make that out. And then around the bottom, it's a lovely finish. So all I'm gonna do is come in here with the uh, welder. I forgot what it was for a minute then. I'm gonna come in here with the welder and uh, we're gonna finish this off. I think that bit of coking there was actually from the first initial tacking because obviously there was no backing there was no argon backing when we tacked that on uh, 
but yeah it looks good so far so I'm gonna come inside with the welder and we're just gonna reflow this seam so that the inside is the neatest and then I might just hit all this while I've got the old tank on its back might hit that with the flapper wheel that's where the previous owners put the cooling jacket on so I think that needs a little bit of tidying up as well never underestimate the value of good protection so I became a father so let's get this get up off and uh, we will go and have a look oh my gosh at what we've just done so I've been in there I've welded found my uh, other spotlight as well and we've cleaned up the edge so down yonder is the welded and complete outlet and on the side we've taken all the rough edges from that weld that somebody had tried to do in the past and uh, well I think this tank is ready for CIP and to be put into service what a freaking productive day folks got loads done so instead of standing the tank up on its arse feet I've left it on its arse <laughs> oh gosh sometimes I'm tongue twisted all the time so yeah I've left it on its arse and I've painted it with Foz gel can you see all that jazzle in there yeah Foz jazzle so this stuff is paint on lime scale remover so I'm hoping that uh, just the treatment that I've given it this afternoon will see us with a shiny new tank in the morning only time will tell this is the stuff anyway I'll show you the label there's the data sheet for it Fos gel phosphoric acid contains phosphoric acid from niche solutions not cheap but goes a long way and I've just noticed something that they've done here look at this Persid 5, Persid 5, eh? Persid 15, Persid 5, Persid 15, cheeky sons of bitches. I'll be asking about that because they are more expensive. Well, I think I'm going to wrap it up, folks. I'm going to pack up for the day. I'm going to shoot off home. I've obviously got the vlog to edit and uh, Tom's asked if he can Google Hangouts with me tonight. He wants to discuss his upcoming penis extension. He's going into hospital for one of those. I think they're going to put an extra inch on for him. So uh, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of having a big schlong. You know, I know all about that. And uh, uh, I'll help him out with that. And, uh, you know, we're going to talk about his control panel and uh, some other things that we're going to do um, when he comes over next week or the week after. So we might get up to maybe a bit of re rewiring, maybe a brew day, probably not a brew day. We'll save that for another time, perhaps. But I do want to do the coconut shy. A lot of you guys out there are doing the coconut shy. And a lot of you guys... And a lot of you guys out there are also brewing the stout and, of course, the vacant gesture. So, I'm having lots of messages asking, have I put the vacant gesture recipe on Patreon? No, I have not. So, the stout recipe is on Patreon. That's access only to patrons. You can get the recipe from the video, though. And the same with the Hefeweizen. That's on Patreon. Uh, but the vacant gesture recipe, I wanted people to watch the video so you get a good grasp of how I'm dealing with the ingredients and then of course the follow up video which is how to brew the beer it's very important if you want to try and achieve the same thing there's people there doing it with a little bit of a twist you really don't have to put any twist into this beer it's a very simple beer and oh, I recommend you just follow the recipe to a T and particularly if, if you're in somewhere like the States or Australia you will get to taste the vacant gesture as it is here at Harrison's Brewery and the brew shed if you follow the recipe to the T which is why I've not put the recipe up uh, I wanted to keep it on the internet so people can listen to what I'm telling them and they can copy it down and they can follow uh, instructions from me verbatim if you like so go ahead and watch the video I might put the beersmith file up or a PDF up 
in a couple of months time I don't have time for uh, the website stuff at the moment so I'm literally relying on YouTube as my main port of communication for you guys and then Patreon for anybody who wants to go a little bit further and uh, get a response from me uh, if you sign up to that then you kind of got my attention because you're supporting the freaking channel and uh, we won't be doing it without a little bit of feedback and a little bit of support from you guys because it takes a heck of a lot of commitment to get the camera out every day and edit a video every day. I've been doing it for over 420 vlogs now and it has become a little bit of a habit uh, but it's also a little bit of a chore. So come on, a little bit back for me and a little bit for you in the same way fair exchange is no robbery so there we go I'm gonna wrap it up and I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna have I am gonna have a vacant gesture sod it when I get there and uh, I'm gonna get this vlog up and then I will uh, hang out with Tom for an hour where all the big knobs hang out we'll see you tomorrow <laughs>